Okay, in this video, we're going to be looking at a property of waves called polarization. And we're going to be looking at how these polarizing filters work. Okay, so firstly, let's look at unpolarized light. This unpolarized light here is traveling in this direction. But as you can see, the electric field of this um, unpolarized light is oscillating in many planes. So an unpolarized light is where the oscillations are more than one plane. When it goes through a polarizing filter, the polarizing filter here only lets uh, components of the electric field through which are oscillating parallel to the transmission axis. So this uh, polarizing filter has a transmission axis. In this case, it's vertical. And it only lets components of the electric field which are parallel to that vertical transmission axis. So at the end, what's coming out is what we call polarized light. So in polarized light, the oscillations of the electric field are only in one plane. Now, polarization can only occur with transverse waves. So if I tried this with sound, which is a longitudinal wave, it would just go straight through. That's because the energy might be going in this direction, but the oscillations are also parallel to that, and that wouldn't be stopped by this polarizing filter of any sort. It would just straight, go straight through. Okay, let's look at how these polarizing filters work. So first, we've got unpolarized light coming in. And as you can see, this polarizing filter is in the vertical plane, and it's only let those components that are parallel to it through. So it's only let the vertical oscillations through. Then we're going to put a second filter in. See, now this one is at some angle theta to the first filter. So now let's zoom in and see what happens. So you can see if we take that component that's coming through the first filter, only components that are parallel to the uh, transmission axis of the second filter are allowed through. And if I spin this polarizing filter, if I carry on spinning the second one and increasing theta, what you'll find is that the component that's coming through will start to decrease and eventually will actually reach zero when it gets 90 degrees. So when the uh, then the angle between the two transmissions are parallel, you'll get maximum intensity. And then when you spun it all the way to 90 degrees, you'll get zero. So when it's like that, none of, the, none of the light will go through. And then if you carry on spinning, even after 90 degrees, then it'll go back up to a maximum. So when they're parallel, you can get the light going through, when they're perpendicular, that transmission axis, you get nothing coming through. So you get again at 270, you get no light, and then back again. So you get this graph, uh, it's like a cosine squared graph. Okay, let's see if we can explain what's going on. Let's assume that the light that's coming towards us all the way from the back is unpolarized. When it goes to the first filter, which is pointing upwards, only light that's oscillating parallel to the vertical plane is going to be allowed through. So that actually already reduces the intensity by 50%. So now the second filter, so actually the light here in the second filter, the one that's closer towards us, it's already polarized in the vertical plane. And when the second filter is pointing up, in other words, they're both parallel, you can see all the lights going through. So watch for a second there. You can see now when it's pointing up, the whole lights through. When it's at a diagonal, you can see the light intensity has decreased a bit. That's because only components of the oscillations that are parallel to the transmission axes are allowed through. And of course, when they're at 90 degrees to each other, perpendicular, none of the light goes through. Okay, the polarization can occur with any transverse wave, and that means it can happen with any part of the electromagnetic spectrum. So here we have a microwave being emitted and in, towards that direction, and this microwave is already polarized. So let's say it's polarized in this direction, so the electric field of the microwave is oscillating up and down like this. So here we have an antenna, a receiver. So when that wave hits the antenna, it's going to read, it's going to give a signal uh, showing that you can detect oscillations. If we spin the antenna, so that's 90 degrees, that signal, that reading is going to go to zero because there's no components that are oscillating in this direction here. So it's going to, and that's a, that can show that the microwave is polarized. Okay, so one use for these polarizing filters is in sunglasses. So it can be used to reduce glare. So you can see the light reflecting off the surface when you're wearing sunglasses are greatly reduced. How does this work? And this is because light that's coming from the sun is unpolarized, but when it reflects off a surface like the water, it actually becomes partially polarized. So you can see here that the re reflected light is only oscillating the horizontal plane. So when we use sunglasses, we have the transmission axis of the sunglasses is actually vertical. So it's blocking that horizontal oscillations from the reflected light. And that's how the glare is reduced. Okay, so sunlight from the sun, uh, sun is unpolarized. And when it reflects over surface, it becomes partially polarized in the horizontal plane. The transmission axis of the sunglasses is vertical. 
so it's blocking those vertical um, the horizontal oscillations from the reflection reducing the glare